It's hot work up there on the roof. You want to get it done and get down fast. Roofing and Sheet Metal Centre supply all your roofing needs. No need to shop around. All made with Aussie Colourbon Steel. rscentre.com.au Robot Building Supplies. Helping you get the right products for the job at a better price. Drive with Bob Murphy and Andy Ma. I'm going to leave the city to get away. I saw a story on afl.com.au today from Kel Toomey and his magnificent team about an old teammate of yours. Uh, no, do you want to get to some oh, tempers? Yeah, there's just yeah, a couple yeah, of yeah. tempers get to Kel about, moment, about yeah. the uh, uh, curtain raises. Oh, please, let me know. So Darren says, they should never have changed it. We always went to see the reserves play before the ones. Uh, there might be insurance issues with curtain raisers. Don't know. Yeah, we'll Is this that. the chopping up the ground? No, question, it's not. No, no. Clint has responded. Yep. Um, not realistic as the quality of the ground isn't up to standard for an AFL quality it's, game after it's been chopped it's up not, by the reserves was the original reason they moved them in the first place. Yeah, not buying that anymore though. Mm. Dockland Stadium's well, that's improved got nothing out of sight. to do with romance either, Matt and uh, Clint. So no, no. Back in the day, bit, that's a bit flimsy, I think. Well, back in the day, they'd have the under 19s reserves and the seniors, and they'd play on the ground. When when um, turf management and turf technolo- technology was far worse than it is nowadays, grounds are in much better nick. That's a bit, if it's just the chopping up the ground, that's a bit thin. No, that me. doesn't that doesn't work. The lack of traffic these days on on those two. So you manage it. You don't have. There's three games at the G or three games at Dock. You don't have six games there on the weekend. We're happy to sort of, you know, have a chop out, but not a chop up. But, um, oh. yeah, did you like what I did then? On the I fly, like too. It. That was nice. I didn't even have that written down. No. That's amazing broadcasting. That's why you want it. That's top shelf. Put that in your weekly in review. Mm-hmm. I was. Alf Brown. No, nah, well, that was self deprecating. If anyone thinks I was being serious then. Uh, no, nah, come on now. Um, Anyway, getting back to what we were talking about originally, Kel Toomey's written a piece about uh, Beck Darcy's boy. That's right. Yeah. And also Luke Darcy's. Correct. But yep. Sam, Sam is their kid who's starting to show some signs for the Oakley Chargers. And there's another little link in a sort of embedded in the Sam Darcy story that I'm very, very keen to talk to Kel about. But um, very, very interested in young Darcy and what Kel Toomey can tell us about him and he's been good enough to join us from afl.com.au. Hello Kel, how are you mate? Good, thank you Andy and Bob. Good yeah, he's going pretty well. Well, they don't need another 203 mobile ruckman down at the Western Bulldogs, do they? That's the last sort of thing they need. Well, he's also played a bit across half back as a third tall defender, and I didn't put this in the story today. But he also kicked five goals uh, on the weekend, playing for Scotch College in Melbourne, obviously in the schools competition. So he's doing a bit of everything, and fair to say that there's a bit of a buzz around Sam Darcy because everyone likes an, a tall prospect who can play at you know key position, and he's shown so far that he can do that. So there's a lot to like about him. He's got a very big frame, doesn't he, Cal? How tall in centimeters? What is it? He's 203 centimetres, and yep, he's pretty enough. lightly framed at the moment. He, he missed the start of the season with a m- minor foot injury, so he's only played a couple of games for the Chargers, but uh, I saw him play uh, his, probably his, his NAB League debut a couple of weeks ago in the wet and did some pretty exciting things, and then the following week after that, he starred. So obviously uh, has spent some time with the Dogs over the pre-season as part of their father-son program. They've only got five father-sons on their list at the moment, so... What's the six? <laughs> Bring another one in at the end of the year. They've had and, enormous... Uh, yeah, he looks like really good. They've probably, well, I've done some data, a bit of a deep, deep dive on this, pretty hastily, I might say, so the, the numbers might be a bit... A dive. Might be a little bit of a skew, but, but I've done some... Um, I've done, I did a bit of deep dive after reading your story. They've been as successful as any club uh, from a strike rate perspective with father-sons, the Western Bulldogs, by quite a margin, to be honest. So we'll have a chat about that in a moment. When I was reading your story about him, um, Callum, trying to imagine, get a mental picture of him, I kept thinking of Nick Cox. Has he got any... Has he got a bit of... Has he got the mobility of Cox? Um, from the young fellow we've seen at Essendon? It's funny you mentioned Nick Cox. It's funny. There's going to be... Everyone's going to want a Nick Cox on their list soon enough, yeah, aren't they? He's yeah. going to be like the new prototype. I don't think he's got that uh, running capacity that Nick Cox has. That's that's rare, rare. But as I mentioned... and I, I, look, Going back a year, I don't think everyone would have been as sure about Nick Cox being able to do what Nick Cox has already done at AFL Level 2. So we know these tallest types can develop at different rates. I haven't seen that 
you know, extreme running cap capacity that Nick Cox has in Sam Darcy just yet. I think he will end up a Ruckman, but given the quality of Ruckman down at the Bulldogs already and the tall players that they've got, he's going to be given plenty of time and opportunity to develop in other spots as well. So we can ask Bob this question. Luke, Luke was clearly a lumbering type, limited in terms of his capacity to get around the ground. Ben, you know, he used yeah, to fall over quite a lot. fell over a lot. Mm. Was the mother... A, did, she have good, did she have good endurance and did she start her feet a bit more than the, the father? Was, uh, be, certainly nimble of, right, okay, of yep, foot. Yep, yeah, okay. Yep. Uh, uh, endurance-wise, um, I had her in the elite category. Oh, okay, right, huh? good. Yep. But well, there you go. I can say that Sam is a very high character. Do I sound a lot like Shifter Shan? You sound a lot like Cal Toomey, <laughs> who was taken over from Shifter Shan. A lot he's, like he's seriously a good young lad. Are Sam. you trying to get on Trade Radio? Is, is you are lobbying for a position on Trade Radio when that time this season comes around? Is this a paid position? So we'll watch this space. <laughs> we'll watch this space, Cal. But there was a link in the story that um, that you posted today that I clicked on, and and I shouldn't have because I wasted about an hour and a half of my day once I did, and I, I don't know why I'd miss, how I'd miss this story when you first publish it early in the month. But, geez, there are names of fathers, brothers and sisters who have already made their way into the rank, whether the dad's been there before, the brothers currently, or the sisters are playing in the AFLW. There, I don't know how many there were, but it looked like there were about 60 or 70 names of players who were sweeping towards the... I imagine the 2021 draft period, some probably, you know, the next year, but... Gee, we're, we've got some familiar names who are looming on the, on the, on the near horizon... Yeah, we do. There was about 60 in that list, and I'm sure I missed a couple across, uh, 60. across different states as well that, that might have popped up. These are brothers, their nephews, their cousins, their stepsons, their far-removed links, but they're links nonetheless. So, I mean, clearly the one that everyone's talking about at the moment is Nick Dacos, and he might be the number one pick, and for absolutely good reason. He's uh, uh, got superstar potential written all over him, the son of Peter. But also in the top sort of rungs of the, the draft board, We've seen the likes of Jace Burgoyne come through. He's the son of Peter, the, the nephew of Sean, and he starred last year. Only one player in the Sandville under-18s competition had more footy than Jace Burgoyne last year, and that was Tom Powell, and we've seen what he's done already at AFL level for North Melbourne this season. Uh, Blaine O'Loughlin is the nephew of Michael, so he's a small defender who's also tied to Adelaide's Next Generation Academy this year. Uh, there's a couple of Wanganines. There's Naziah, who's the nephew of Gavin, and he's also the stepson <laughs> of Terry Malira. And there's ex Wanganine, who's actually Gavin's son, who, who's eligible to go to Port Adelaide and, and Essendon. And also a bit of a, a different one as well is Jason Horn, who at the moment would probably be Nick Dacos's main contender. Well, he is Nick Dacos's main contender for the number one pick, Jason Horn from South Australia, South Adelaide. He's the stepson of Fabian Francis, who's Obviously, uh, oh, got Port Adelaide links, one, uh, and <laughs> did he really? Yeah, there you go. And the one flashback. we want to talk about, guys, as well, is Jai Lockett. Now, yes. he's the nephew of Plugger. Yes. What is he? Tell me what sort of... Please, nephew of Plugger. Please, not. please tell me he's just a powerhouse full forward. With the mullet. If he's Has he ever thrown and a, a crutch <laughs> at a TV camera? And a nasty glare. <laughs> and, he does, and, he do, and he doesn't say much. He likes dirt bikes and yeah. he likes greyhounds. Hates reading books and likes <laughs> the TV show Elf. <laughs> just tell me all of that is... <laughs> tell me all of that is part of this kid's makeup. I can tick a couple of things off. His nickname's Plugger, so that's a tick. He's a, he's a forward, so that's a tick. He's a good kick, so that's a tick. Uh, he's playing for North Ballarat, so that's a tick. And uh, the other thing that I won't be able to sort of correlate with Plugger himself, though, he, Jai Lockett is a member of the Gold Coast Academy, so they actually get first dibs on Jai Lockett, even though he's down playing uh, some footy in Victoria in the NAB League this year, having mm-hmm. spent uh, a bit of his youth in Queensland. So... Yeah, a nice prospect and one we'll look for uh, in the latter part of the draft at the end of the year. Oh, Gold Coast. Oh, that's what, imagine a Lockett King combo up there. Just long bombs to Lockett and King well, for the next decade. For the Suns, you'll have to call him Slugger. <laughs> Not Plugger. Sluggo. Yes. <laughs> well, Sluggo. Rather than plug her. Yeah, like that's it. And that's it, yeah. Sluggos. Yeah, there you go. You get a sluggo. So, give me... I'm going to put you under the pump here. You've mentioned a thousand names there, and it's a really it's a really interesting piece. If you want to have a read of it, you'll find it. Just go to the Darcy piece at todayfl.com.au right now, and you'll see the link to the story mentioning all these names and who they are and their connections to more famous names um, that have come before them. Who are the who are the rolled gold five, Cal? If you had to hang your reputation right now, what is it, the 27th? 
of April. I know it's a long way away and a lot of things can change, but but who are the five that you would think will be bid on, taken, top 10, top 20? Who, who are those? Well, Dacos is in there. Yep. I think Burgoyne's close to that mark as well. Uh, Horn clearly is right a, a, amongst that group. Sam Darcy's pushing into that uh, discussion. Really? Uh, and... And Nazai Wanganin as well is someone who, who could be on the cusp of that top 20. Someone I do want to just mention as well who could break into that with a good uh, run of form is Jai Sarong. So he's the brother of Caleb. Uh, he's had a bit of a slower start to the season, having sort of um, done some cricket over summer. But uh, one from the Gippsland Power, and we know how good Caleb mm-hmm. Sarong's been at the Dockers since stepping into the AFL landscape. So Jai Sarong is one to watch, and I, I'm a big fan of his from mm. just glimpses here and there so far. So mm. he might be a little bit of a smoky, but the other ones there yeah, I think uh, are right up there. And Jackson Archer as well, he's probably a, a latter stages of the draft pool type of, type of prospect, but um, having watched him, <laughs> it's clear that he's an archer because he throws himself with the footy, goes back with the flight, tackles hard, competes. Yeah, apple not far from the tree <laughs> at that point. Well, Jarvis Murphy says hello. <laughs> <laughs> Not one mention. <laughs> the dogs, is he going <laughs> down to the Father Son Academy wow. at the Western Bulldogs or not? Wow. At any stage? He's mentioned everyone else. Cal, you're a man of significant influence. <laughs> I'm very disappointed that I haven't seen anywhere on afl.com.au yet with your byline on top of it. A real strong push for the brother, brother, sister, sister, oh, sister, brother, brother, sister rule. I know well, the mother, the father, son is there, and we know the mother, daughter will will happen. But um, why haven't you pushed for the sibling rule? <laughs> good, good question. I, I can only push as many campaigns as I can, Andy. I've yeah. uh, I've been pushing one, and that's to get Darcy Parish into the midfield at Essendon. So that one <laughs> we've kicked off over the last couple of weeks. You can say it, Cal. So, you can say it, mate. Maybe the we need sibling to move on one, to the next one. The sibling one's in the bin. That's ridiculous. You, I, you're, <laughs> see, you, Murphy, are a man of romance. So, uh, unless you're just being. Used to be. Unless you're just used to being be. deliberately um, antagonistic for the good of radio, because we like a bit of back and forth and you know, a bit of sparring between the uh, two co hosts always triggers a bit was, of interest. If I was doing that, I would never admit it. That's Cal, how cold I <laughs> Cal, is that. Uh, uh, just. Uh, I'm I'm dead serious on this. I know it all, but that's easily got around the rorting. Is is the second part of it that the, the, the draft would be too? Co- I mean, it's compromised enough as it is. Is this just another layer that w- would make it almost unwieldy if this was to be at all considered? Yeah, I think that's more it's more B yep. in that regard, uh, Andy. And look, the AFL's wound back the Next Generation Academy this year, so the first twenty picks are protected that's a complicated discussion in itself but next year it'll wind back again so the first 40 picks are protected you can't match bids in that bracket so there's been plenty of discussion that with the academies the next generation academies the father-son rule that it's too uh, compromised as as it is so i don't think there's any any chance of uh, the afl adding another layer of um, compromised nature to the to the nav afl draft Pl- but I, yeah. I like the romance of it I thank just, you <laughs> i don't I don't think it's uh, one that will get together so. much steam. No, I don't. Will please, up, please yeah, tell so. me that the, the advocates to abolish the father-son rule uh, have been marginalised or they're or they're not being listened to. But please tell me that at the very least, the father-son rule is is what? just here to stay. Yeah, yeah, here to stay for sure. And I don't think that's any chance to go anywhere at all. The one thing that could be looked at in coming years, and it was going to be looked at prior to. Uh, prior to COVID-19 changing a lot of the landscape, was the AFL reviewing the discount that's given to father-son picks and academy picks. So at the moment, you get 20% off, which, again, very complicated, the draft points index. You get 20% off when you're matching a bid but uh, for a father-son or an academy player. But the AFL was looking at reducing that, thinking that the, the advantage you already get for having first option over the father-sons was enough an, an advantage before uh, the, the uh, that came in. So... Yep, yep. Look, I don't think that's going to happen anytime soon, and that's a very complicated discussion in itself, but it's not going anywhere. Plain and simple, father son's here to stay. Good man. Which we love, I think. Oh, here, here we do. Mm. Yeah, absolutely we do. Hey, mate, good work. Keep it up. It's um, it's fascinating reading. It, it always is. You and your um, mob there do a great job um, keeping us in touch with the uh, developing um, crop of players that are coming up underneath uh, the you know the elite system and um, and the ones that are going to be sort of we're going to be talking about a lot in the years to come. Um Good work on the Darcy story, and we'll t- chat to you soon. 
No worries. I'll keep an eye out for Jarvis Murphy. Good on you, yeah, Cal. Key, key little sleeper. <laughs> Late developer. Yep. You never know. You never, you never, know. never know. You never know. He's going to make his mark somewhere, that young fella, me boy. Somewhere. 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 GWS News just in. That's my breaking news. Right, Thank I you. Got that, yep. GWS fine twenty thousand dollars. Straight up, no, no suspended. Julio, straight up, twenty grand pay up for Jason McCartney approaching the umpires on Friday night. Approaching. Yes, in, in a, inverted commas. In a menacing manner. <laughs> Because we approach each other every day. For yeah, work we do. And for lunch. And, and I think it was a bit more. Uh, we approach a few topics. Animated. And Anim- robust. Robust. <laughs> Fiery. Swearing. <laughs> yeah, there's a bit of that. There's yeah, a bit I fruity. Know. I use all that happy with That's a big <laughs> fine. You want all that happy with 20 grand. Yeah, they're, um, they're not messing about at the Where moment. Where's that the money AFL. go? Consolidated revenue. Top end. Just the cream on the top. <laughs> well, it'll go. What are you. Oh, yeah, you can call it that if you like. It'll just go into that pool of money that we spent somewhere to develop the game. It'll probably go straight back to the Giants so they can develop grassroots footy in the west of Sydney. <laughs> Pay the money. We'll give it back to you. You can spend it on whatever you like. Josh Speaking Kelly. of... Uh, spend it on Josh Kelly. You know, spicy radio. Josh Kelly's. Rumpus <laughs> room. Seven years. Spicy radio. Yeah, go on. We need to dig into the Jezza Cameron... Oh. Phenomenon. Can we just? I've done a lot of work on the father no, side. Can we do that on the other side of as we well? Can. And Jezza Cameron. Yeah. Oh, I felt the s- return of the that nickname. That felt disgusting. So Jezza. No, no, no. Jezza Cameron, you beauty. Shut him up. Love listening to our selection of podcasts and latest sporting news? Then jump onto the SEN app and test drive our snackable sporting news podcast, SEN Sports Update. All thanks to car sales. CarSales.com.au, Australia's number one car website.